Many thanks for uh, the invitation. I'm uh, Noemi Kohn from Max Planck Institute um, for Mathematics and the Science. Um, so I would like to talk here about um, a discovery, a discovery of a bridge between two seemingly very different domains of maths, which are information geometry and algebraic geometry or topology. Um, in particular, um, what I discovered is that information geometry and in particular um, statistical manifolds, that means manifolds of probability distributions on a finite set related to exponential families are tightly related to a very beautiful um, domain, which is called topological field theory. Um, so this domain is actually the fruit of amazing interactions between topologists and people from quantum field theory, so physics. And what mathematicians do usually when they see a physics theory is that they want to axiomatize. And so here is what they did. They introduced unbreakable rules, that means axioms, to give some mathematical structure to quantum field theory. Um, so here it is. So in the process of giving axioms for quantum field theory, mathematicians introduced so-called Frobenius manifolds. So Frobenius manifolds are just, as you know, manifolds, that means spaces which are locally Euclidean, but with a special structure, algebraic structure. In particular, you have a notion of multiplication. So given X and Y flat local tangent fields, you define a multiplication, which I denoted by circle here. And the axioms are called associativity relation. And second one is just potentiality. So you have a potential function uh, everywhere, local. Um, in particular, so you have a rank three tensor, symmetric tensor, which I call A. And this one is in fact tightly related to G, which is the Riemannian metric, G here. And associativity, as you can see, is given that here X multiplied with Y, comma z will be just g of x, comma y multiplied with z. So you have associativity relation. Um, I'll mention later the connection to statistical methods. Um, so in other words, um, this metric is just invariant with respect to multiplication. So this is the axiom of associativity. Now the second axiom, the potentiality, is that you have this rank three symmetric tensor, A, and this will be just given by some given potential function defined locally, phi here, and you take uh, three times the derivative, this just means you derive, derive it three times. And that's all you need to know to have a Frobenius manifold. So, um, I think it's a very beautiful and exciting project because it leads, leads to many unexplored paths relating algebraic geometry and information geometry. So maybe for people who come from physics, you have heard of the witten dyke graph verlinda verlinda equation, WDVB. It's um, a PDE system here, which is given by this very complicated formula. Um, here you can guess that phi is the potential function and g is going to be the Riemannian metric. And so this looks pretty complicated. But so, so the variable is phi here. Sorry? The variable is phi, is the one we solve, the one we solve phi. Or... Uh, this, yeah, well, yeah, I guess so. But what I do as an um, algebraist is that I just consider this equation, which is much simpler. So I don't have to do PDEs, I just do this. I don't know, wait a second, wait a second. So this G, because I didn't realize it this G is like a metric? Right? It's the, the Riemannian metric. metric. Yeah, yeah. So we're working with Riemannian metric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Riemannian metric. Uh -huh. yeah. So yeah, this formula, I've never touched it. 
and I don't have to. It's only the associativity I have to. And in other words, actually, this property here is going to be very important, is that it expresses a flatness condition. So the vanishing of the curvature. It just means this. Um, okay, so this is a short introduction for Frobenius manifolds, which axiomatize topological field theory. Um, just a word in case you're interested about structures of Frobenius manifolds. There is actually a simpler or weaker version, how you prefer, of Frobenius manifolds where you don't need any Riemannian metric. So if you have problems with dealing with the Riemannian metric, you can just forget it and use a weaker version called F manifolds. This was introduced by Hertling and Manning here in 2011, I think. Here. Um, the story is that you have always a multiplication, which is commutative and associative, um, and even symmetric pairing. So this reminds me maybe about the metric. And something we call F identity. So it's a formula relying on Poisson tensor, which I will, I think, not present here um, for the sake of simplicity. Uh, and, and that's all actually, F manifolds and that all. That's an outline in blue here. But if you want the complete Frobenius manifold structure, you can add, so this is outlined in red, the metric, the Riemannian metric, and this very interesting and useful even symmetric tensor A plus this WDVV relation, that means associativity relation between A and the Riemannian metric G. So that's the, um, the story. So Frobenius manifolds were introduced by Dubrovin, the weaker version for Klingman in here. So maybe you're wondering, why is this interesting at all? Um, this is fascinating, actually, <laughs> because um, so until now, only three main classes of Frobenius manifolds were really known. And um, three main classes which are really, really important uh, in, in this domain. So for example, you have quantum cohomology. So quantum cohomology is very much related to Gramov, Wedden, and Variance. And I'll, I'll talk about this. Um, you have this manifold of unfoldings of singularities, which is interesting for robotics, for example. You're just unfolding a singularity. So you can take a paper, you just crush it, and then you unfold the singularity. It's exactly this type of process, algebraically done here. Um, and the third one, uh, also impressive, the Baranikov Konsevich um, theory. So you have solutions to some Morar Carton equation. And um, you use here Gerson Haber, Matel Vilkovsky algebra. Um, I should mention that the one, the first and the third are tightly related to mirror symmetry problems, because the first one is the A side of the mirror, and that's the B side of the mirror. So it's fascinating, really fascinating project. So here, um, to resume, you have Frobenius manifolds, which is ruling. Um, structures of three incredibly important domains here, and which are related by mirror problems. There are problems here. This is the story of a trilogy, or should I say it was the story of a trilogy. Um, since it turned out that there's a fourth class, not just three, but four, and in a joint work with uh, Yuri Ivanovich Manin, we proved that there exists a fourth class of Frobenius manifold, the manifold of probability distributions over finite set, modular condition of flatness. It has to be flat. So there's this fourth class, which I find super interesting in relation to the three others, right? Um, does your finite set have the discrete topology? Which topology does your finite set have? Oh, this is a, a marriage and sort of a statistical manifold. I'm not adding anything new. I'm proving it has a structure for being as manifold. When your finite set is has the discrete topology? Most, yeah. Okay. There's no... Sorry? 
Yeah, so there's a theorem that I did not cite here for simplicity, which tells you that the WDVV condition, so associativity condition, is, uh, well, Frobenius manifold condition is verified if and only if um, the connection is flat. And this is true only for given parameters. So you have this um, connection, which you find in Amari's papers, and you calculate, and it's for alpha equals to plus or minus one. So only for this case. And the other ones, not. Yeah. Um, so here, yeah, you have this tetralogy here, statistical manifold, quantum cohomology, side of space, and um, this, but then in, uh, oh, sorry, Vanika Fonsevich theory. And here you can notice that you have very different types of geometries, symplectic geometry, real or complex, real or complex. And here, actually, our proof is that we have um, something called paracomplex geometry. Oh, uh, paracomplex geometry, uh, let me explain. <laughs> so you're going to work not on complex numbers, but on a different algebra, the algebra of paracomplex numbers, which is defined as follows. So like in the complex case, to give an analogy, you have one and i, such that i squared is minus one. Here is different in the sense that you have one and some epsilon, such that epsilon squared is equal to plus one and not minus one, so it's plus one. So it's different algebra, which appears in the statistical manifold setting. Um, in particular, yes, this is not a field, so you cannot have vector space. Sorry, can you tell again to show again the last time? Yeah. So here you're just saying you, you, to compute uh, on E, you, you observe that the E squared is one, and what is field? Uh, this is like the complex number. You have R and epsilon R, which is given by the set of numbers such that they can decompose as follows, X yeah. plus epsilon Y. So you're just saying it's an isomorphism and say to say that's it, that's something you're saying here. I'm just defining uh, the paracomplex numbers. It's like the complex numbers, except that this mm -hmm. guy here squares to one. Um, yes. Okay, so. okay. Um, what, um, what I want to say uh, more in detail here. Yes, so like to give an overview of what's happening, what's happening is the following. So this statistical manifold turns out to have this paracomplex structure. I'll define it later. Turns out to be an F manifold or an even a Frobenius manifold. So um, the metric is the Fischer-Rao metric, so your statistical manifold. Um, and the very important rank three tensor will be just the chance of Amari chance of um, tensor. So this, this one, exactly, will play um, an immense role for defining Frobenius manifolds. Um, OK. Now, uh, actually, we show that statistical manifolds can be identified to a projective space defined over paracomplex numbers. So that's our construction. Statistical manifold is a projective space defined of this paracomplex algebra. And uh, since we were working very much in this um, chensov morozova um, category that they define as CAP, um, we show that the statistical manifold appears um, as a section of a cone, um, a cone which will have the property of being one of the five Vinberg cones. And these cones are in bijection with Jordan algebras. Or you can use also Prilly algebras here. They're very algebraic, actually, it's very astonishing. Um, so yeah, these are properties that we show um, that exist for statistical methods. Oh. Yeah, so parent complex structure just means that, well, um, if you have this real vector space, you will define an endomorphism K here from E to itself, such that um, it squares to the identity here. So uh, uh, involution. And uh, you have eigenspaces, E plus and E minus, 
with these eigenvalues here. And that's what we call a pair complex structure, actually. We have the same measure. That's also part of the addition. Sorry? Yeah, so same dimension. Same ask, dimension. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is dimension M and M here. This 2M. Yeah, yeah, it's important. Great. Um, yeah, so what I wanted to say is that since we showed that there's a Frobenius manifold um, structure for statistical manifolds, um, the idea in this uh, paper for the proceedings was to introduce uh, an analog of Gromov Witten invariance, but for the statistical setting. Um, so for the story, the classical setting is that you're going to count some rational, like holomorphic curves. Uh, on a symplectic manifold, that's the classical setting. And here, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna define some statistical gram of wooden invariants, which give exact information about intersection of paracomplex curves. And this is gonna be super important for learning because if the, the geodesic, the curves get super close to each other, then your learning system will succeed. And otherwise, if the curves just diverge, then it fails. You, you don't learn anything. So that's the new gromov witten um, invariant for statistical manifolds. Um, so I'll just skip here the classical setting because um, I don't have time. <laughs> but um, yeah, in our case, um, this will be very much related to this. <laughs> so like entropy and things like that. Um, in particular, let me see. Yeah, we will define it as um, these multilinear maps here, um, which are gonna be given by, by this type of um, formula. So they appear as part of the potential function, so very important potential function here, and which is a, turned out to be a callback leibler entropy function here. Um, yeah, and now the learning lemma goes as follows. Um, I'll go here, learning process, I think. Yeah, this proposition tells you whether your system has learned or failed in learning. Um, so this learning process consists in determining if there exists intersections of these paraholomorphic curves. So you have this E plus space and E minus space and the curve respectively define E plus and E minus. And if they get very close to each other, so that's just hand wavy, but that's what says the proposition. If these two curves get super close to each other, then your process has succeeded in learning. Um, so that's why our complex structure enters the game and is super important for defining all this realm of wooden invariants for statistical manifolds and why it interferes in the learning um, process. So that's, the, that's what says this proposition here. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think I'm, I'm done with what I wanted to say. Um, yeah, I have like 30 seconds, but I think I'll stop here. Like if you want to discuss more, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be happy to.